to the portfolio committee meeting. And I'm also again sorry that I was experiencing some connectivity uh, problems here. That's why I'm now on the phone. So I'm very sorry about that. Uh, we, the department will keep us updated on developments that side regarding whatever is happening uh, on the side of the government building. Ntate Lubavalo. Read the agenda to us, please. Hey, good morning, Chair. Yes. Good morning, Chair. Uh, uh, today is a, is, is a briefing by the Department on how economic diplomacy contributes to addressing South Africa's domestic challenges. Thank you, Chair. Do we have apologies? Yes, Chair. I only received one apology, Chair, from uh, Deputy Minister Borders. He's attending. No, no, no. Sorry, my apologies. He's from the Minister Marshall from Berlin. She's attending the NCOP chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, we there is an apology from Honorable Mpanza. Okay. He he did speak to me and indicated that he, he has got something else to attend to. So he will not be with us throughout the meeting. So in the course of the meeting, he will be excused as agreed with me yesterday. Any other apology? If there is none, honorable members, I'm now going to give over to the minister to commence with the presentation and introduce the team. Uh, thank, you very much. Lady. thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, please uh, forgive me for the noise uh, that we will have. Uh, we understand, here. Mama. We understand. Thank you. And uh, should uh, we be told that it's safe to go in, uh, I will briefly cut off, but we'll rejoin uh, the no meeting. Uh, I'm joined, Chairperson, by uh, Ambassador Mokwena, who will, uh, along with Mr. Nasruddin, uh, make the slide presentation on our behalf. With your permission, Chairperson, I wish to make a few introductory uh, remarks before they proceed. No problem. Thank you, Chairperson. So uh, allow me to begin then, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. I wish to thank you for inviting us to present our assessment on how our diplomacy-related activities in Africa have contributed to addressing the domestic challenges facing South Africa. As honorable members are aware, Africa is an economy of a combined GDP of around 3.5 trillion US dollars, almost equal to the GDP of Germany. The African Development Bank estimates that about 4.1% growth in Africa is possible in 2022. This is a worrying fall from their estimate of 2021, which was 6.9%. This fall, which is uh, predicted, is due in part to the impact of the Russia-Ukraine conflict on global and African trade. Chairperson, the fortunes of our economic diplomacy are dependent on a strong manufacturing and industrial base, on global peace and stability, on good governance, free of corruption and conflict, on a thriving agricultural sector, and on effective mitigation of climate change, as well as, Chairperson, the difficult one of assuring energy security. The first aspiration Recording as in progress. would recall of Agenda 2063 is the call for a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. 
and Africa determined to eradicate poverty in one generation and build shared prosperity through social and economic transformation of the continent. Our Agenda 2063 is inextricably linked to the vision that is set out in our own South African National Development Plan that by 2030, we, informed by our national interests, should be a globally competitive economy and an influential and leading member of the international community. This is the driver of the work that we do. Through the NDP, South Africa aims to address the triple challenges that honorable members are very familiar with of unemployment, inequality, and poverty, with a focus on creating a strong and inclusive economy. So chairperson and honorable members, economic diplomacy is a new reality toward the achievement of our national priorities through diplomatic work, and it complements the traditional political diplomacy that our missions perform. In the assessments that we present today, we include a number of key activities implemented as per the annual plans of the department. These activities are carried out both at head office and through our missions. The work of our department includes one, identifying opportunities, two, presenting these opportunities to South African companies, three, supporting South African companies to pursue the interests we've identified, and fourth, protecting the interests of South African companies where we can, when they are threatened abroad. Through investment or trade chains, our belief that jobs are created, that we can eradicate poverty, and that companies which successfully invest are able to further reinvest the profits they earn in our country. In this regard, honorable members will note in our presentation that our assessment focuses on activities initiated, those supported, and those promoted by the department, and we try to give a sense of the impact of these activities. Honorable Chairperson and members of the committee, our regional body, SADEC, as well as our continental body, the African Union, also play an important role in creating a conducive environment for trade and investment with a view to creating economic growth and employment for our continent. You would see through some of the work in partnerships and cooperation uh, uh, activities that it is the AU that may lead or indeed our regional body, SADEC. Chairperson, honorable members would be aware by now that earlier this year, I launched a mechanism that we call the Coordination Mechanism for Economic Diplomacy or COMED. It brings together key government departments, state-owned companies, private sector organizations such as Business Unity South Africa, the Banking Association of South Africa, and other bodies to bridge the past silo mentality that we all had and to improve coordination of what we are calling South Africa Inc. in the pursuance of economic diplomacy. This mechanism, which is still at really its infant stage, will, see a rep will become a repository and a source of exchange of information on investment and trade leads under one contact point. We believe it will make our work easier in ensuring that our national interests are adequately marshaled, promoted, and protected. Chairperson, these were brief introductory remarks to set the stage for the substantive presentation that will be made by the team le led by Ambassador Mukwena, who's a chief director in our Africa branch. So with your permission, Chairperson, I request that the team be allowed to present the assessments 
for the committee's consideration. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Ntate Mukwena, wamu hezi ntate, tuntalero. Kim me Mukwena. Oh, Kim me. Kiki, kiko pa kine lo matoko me tingi nsarel. Nsarel, kiko kolo ta di khomu, kiko kolo ta di khomu me Mukwena. Thank you, Honorable, uh, Honorable Member. Uh, yes, yes, I'll appreciate the cows, but uh, but uh, <laughs> there'll be too many SRM Musoto, too many. Thank you very much, Minister, and uh, thank you, Chairperson, uh, Mahuma Pelo, and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee for giving us the time to engage with you on this very important topic uh, involving our work around the continent as far as economic diplomacy is concerned. Uh, Chairperson, I'd like to just lay uh, in terms of the presentation to indicate that we will cover the following. Uh, I'll en en engage the context. Uh, we'll engage the country specific activities on the continent that involve not only our missions, but also the work that head office does, that DERCO does, and in some instances in collaboration with our partner departments, uh, will also engage the work that SADC has done uh, in the region uh, and some of the challenges that we confront. Uh, and and we, we will also be making some recommendation, recommendations, Chair, Honorable Members and Minister. In terms of the context, we, we, we reflect on our strategic goals as in pursuit and achievement of national priorities. And these national priorities, honorable members, are illustrated there for uh, alleviation or addressing triple challenges of poverty, unemployment, um, and inequality through economic diplomacy. The key economic diplomacy objectives of our South African missions are encapsulated in the strategies or country economic strategies that we have developed with our missions. And these strategies um, and, and engage, among others, uh, value-added exports, facilitate outward foreign direct investment in prioritized sectors to enhance the image or branding of our country and also to promote inward uh, investment and tourism. We also utilize structured bilateral mechanisms, Chair, such as joint commissions, uh, binational commissions, um, as well as uh, other forms of engagement, such as uh, ne negotiations around trade opportunities, and, and we also resolve uh, challenges our companies experience um, through, through these structured mechanisms. We, we also utilize business fora in, 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 in consultation, of course, with the DTIC and our missions. We also use business chambers um, and, and other platforms of engagement, uh, uh, Chair. On the African continent, we, we make use of very high level engagements, uh, which we believe play a very critical role in the unlocking of businesses and trade opportunities. And among those would be your joint commissions of corporations, uh, which are chaired at level of ministers, sometimes deputy ministers. Um, we also make use of senior officials meetings, we also, of course, make use of binational commissions, which are chaired at the level of the president. We have seen an increase in the footprint by South Africa in the engagement of our traditional markets. And also, we also looking at identifying through our missions, uh, other non-traditional traditional markets or new markets for investment and trade opportunities. We collaborate with the DTIC and of course other members of the economic cluster such as the DMRE, 
um, as well as science and technology um, uh, to identify new markets as I indicated. Chairperson, if we are to um, see a lot of yield uh, in the economic space, we have to ensure that we have laid a good ground for regional and continental peace and security. So part of our work in order to cultivate ground for economic prosperity is to ensure that peace and prosperity and, and continental peace and security prevail on the continent. We make use, of course, uh, of, of our SADC uh, regional body, which plays a very critical role towards uh, economic integration and industrial development in the region, um, Chairperson. If I may, uh, on the second slide, give practical examples of how we engage uh, around structured bilateral mechanisms. And if I may also indicate, Chair, that we have plus minus 41 structured bilateral mechanisms. And these are, as I indicated, either senior officials meeting, uh, senior officials led or minister led deputy minister-led or president-led. I'd like to just demonstrate uh, the, in, the, in brief, when we, it comes to country-specific activities, I would like to make an example of some of the high-level engagements that we have, we have been able to achieve or engage to unlock uh, economic opportunities for South Africa in order to address uh, the triple challenges. And it also shows Chairperson that what DERCO does together with, with its missions, as well as with support from partner departments, together with companies, we can achieve a lot in the context of South Africa Inc., which Minister has referred to. The first example I'd like to make is arising from, uh, arises from a state visit um, to South Africa by President Kenyatta in November 2021, which included uh, Transnet engineering among the site visits uh, to Kudus Port. Uh, then this was followed by Transnet engineering visiting uh, Kenya Railways on 6 and 7 July 2022. Arising from this visit of July and also from the state visit of 2021, we developed a draft MOU between Transnet Engineering and Kenya Railway, and quotations for coaches have been sent to the Kenya Railways, and we await decision. We also yielded from that engagement uh, an engagement with a company for remanufactured air compressors, and they have since uh, Kenya has since sourced quotations from ourselves. And we await acceptance of the quotations uh, following uh, our submission or uh, transnet submission of these quotations. At the government front, um, Chairperson and Minister, we, we facilitate the signing of an MOU or between the government printing works and Kenya printing services or Kenya government and in this regard, we're trying to ensure that we can assist Kenya to print face value documents. And in this regard, we're talking about passports, licenses, driver's licenses, um, or, or any other forms, birth certificates, uh, you name them, which our government printing works of South Africa has proven to have a lot of experience in and uh, a lot of interest has been shown by a number of countries that we have visited or have come through to South Africa who have also visited the facility of the government printing works. Through our assistance as well, we assisted uh, the Amat Personnel Carrier APC um, company called OTT. It produces Amat Personnel Carriers uh, it's located here in Pretoria. And if they, they get the bid and have been shortlisted, of course, as one of the three bidders, if they do succeed 
with a bid, it will yield uh, up to 151 permanent jobs, uh, up to 70 limited duration staff, and, um, and, and of course, it will also, in terms of spin-offs for other enterprises, it will yield about 18 uh, benefit, I mean, benefits for 18 large enterprises, um, benefits for 26 medium to large enterprises, benefits, of course, for 61 small to medium enterprises, and benefits for 71 benefits for small enterprises. The, the amount of this contract is about 70 million USD, the value of the contract. On, on the next page, on slide five, uh, you can move to slide five. As minister indicated, we also do investor after care. So it's not always the case where everything will go right after an investment and where things um, uh, become problematic or challenging. Uh, we invoke our minister or president to assist to unlock. So in this regard, we have a very good investment, very high investment in Uganda uh, through the IDC, which is a 10-year investment amounting to USD 115 million, 115 million uh, for the construction of a 296 room five-star hotel in Kampala. Uh, the hotel is, um, is finished and um, it has got some occupancy, but uh, there are challenges of repatriation of funds and so forth, which we are still working with um, the government of Uganda on. Um, the engagements we had during the JCC with Uganda in Kampala uh, during July uh, this year um, ensured that the Ugandan government appreciates the challenges um, we experience around some of the investments and it has shown keenness from their part to assist us as far as practically possible to ensure that we continue to invest in the Ugandan market. With regard to Seychelles, uh, yet another example of how economic diplomacy, particularly in the area of tourism, has been able to provide a number of jobs for our young chefs. This year, during the, co the, the Joint Commission meeting, um, um, the senior officials meeting, which preceded this, the Joint Commission meeting, which is still coming up in October, we agreed with the Department of Tourism of Seychelles that there would be an exchange program uh, of learners in, 20 to, in up to 2024. And we, we, we learned from the benefits that we observed in 2018, 2019, when South Africa had uh, chefs participating in an exchange program. There were 30 chefs that participated in the exchange program. We ended up having two chefs uh, gainfully employed in Seychelles. So this really helps alleviate some of the challenges, no matter how small uh, the achievement might be. We also, um, uh, sold to, to Seychelles Police Force uh, armored uh, vehicles um, in terms of their program towards crowd, crowd management control. Uh, these vehicles will be delivered as soon as some of the fittings have been concluded or completed by a South African company. Very, very recently, a meeting took place uh, with Rwanda on the next page uh, by West Grow, uh, which took a trade mission to Rwanda. And within the trade mission was a company that uh, manufactures defense equipment and mill core. And some discussions were held um, and a report is, is, is um, we have a report that indicates what came out of the report what came out of that discussion as far as defense equipment is concerned. 
There's also a very interesting project that is going on between IDC, our mission, and the government of Rwanda. Um, and in this regard, the, the, a company called a, a Kivu Queens or an Afrinest have put together to, uh, with the assistance of IDC funding, a floating luxury hotel on Lake Kivu in Rwanda. This luxury hotel is one of the few that you can find in the world and to find one on the African continent of such standard brings a lot of tourism towards um, that part of the country. And it's also, this Afrinest is also in partnership with the South African Mentis Collection Group. And Mentis Collection Group does luxury accommodation across the continent um, in, in, in secluded areas. It's not your run of the mill five star as such. Uh, it does very rare sites and, and accommodation uh, such as what we find in the Kivu Queen cruise ship. Uh, very recently, we also had a visit by two ministers from Comoros um, uh, around 9 to 12 August 2022. These were ministers of energy, water, and hydrocarbons. And they also had meetings with the, our Minister of Agriculture. They had meetings with IDC as well as DBSA to establish whether they would be able to fund some of the projects that would be arising out of their visit. They visited a number of companies as well, including the Polychem Replacement Parts, which uh, manufactures electricity distribution components for national and regional grids. Uh, Comoros, uh, if I may further explain, imports most of its basic stuff, uh, food products from various countries, including South Africa. There's also opportunity for them to import uh, from our halal uh, products here in South Africa, which uh, are seeing a lot of um, interest throughout the world. Comoros has got a very large um, Muslim population, and we believe that if they can tap into a halal uh, uh, food products, uh, this will augur very well for companies producing halal foods. We also, um, through our mission in Moroni, encouraged negotiations between AMRO Aviation, which is a company based here in South Africa, uh, to establish a route from Johannesburg to Moroni once a week. The, com the Parliament of Comoros has approved that this company can fly once a week to Moroni. So we do believe that when operations start around November of this year, we will begin to see a lot more movement, a lot more trade between our two countries. The opportunities are vast. With regard to Mauritius, our mission is working very hard. Um, having had a lull over the past two years, they have resumed operations to engage uh, in the area of economic diplomacy. And in this regard, our mission is planning to host a South Africa week in Port Louis in October, 2022. And this uh, will facilitate uh, or promote trade, uh, investment, food, uh, and so forth um, produced by disadvantaged women. That is the target the mission wishes to achieve. The mission is also negotiating with the CMT, cut, make, and trim in textile manufacturing in, um, in Mauritius to, to develop a plant or resuscitate some of the township factories in KwaZulu-Natal, which had gone redundant in, in, the, in the area of cut, make, and trim because Mauritius is known to do this very, very well. This project will, of course, provide jobs to the KZN community around Ladysmith. The mission will further host uh, a small enterprise development agency, CEDA, 
and about 20 women and small medium enterprises uh, between 26 to 30th September 2022 to showcase products. Mission is also uh, promoting tourism in South Africa and has developed a video clip that shows rural destinations, not only your Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, but this is a very innovative video that I've personally seen that also promotes the rest of the, 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 the rest of the country. Mission is also promoting um, um, the, the procurement of fish, particularly snook fish by a company in Mauritius so that they can bring in snook fish into Mauritius, into the Mauritian market. With Ethiopia, on the 9th of uh, June, 2022, the mission held a meeting with food and agriculture with FAO, uh, an organ of the United Nations to establish contact and explore possibilities of FAO sourcing its future agricultural supplies from South Africa. We don't know where FAO sources at the moment, but it is a good thing that the mission is engaging FAO to ensure that at least food products from South Africa are also sourced by them as we are a member. The mission also engaged a chairperson in the 12th FEO Chamber International Trade Fair held in Ethiopia uh, by the Ethiopian Chamber of Commerce and Sectoral Association. And in this regard, the mission was really trying to see if we can uh, establish contact across the Ethiopian value chain for small medium enterprises so that these enterprises can source uh, products from South Africa a lot more products from South Africa. So as I indicated, Chair, we are not going to be exhaustive in all, in all the countries. We are just sampling regions, as you can see. Um, we, are, we are now going to move to some of the countries in West Africa. In terms of uh, country-specific activities, again, uh, on Cote d'Ivoire, we note that the department facilitated uh, interest um, expressed by Umgeni Water in the Ivorian National Development Plan project title supplying drinking water to the city of Abidjan. And according to the Ivorian NDP National Development Plan, the total cost for the region financing and implementation of works to reinforce the drinking of water supply of the city of Abidjan from the river May is estimated at 294 million euro. So bilateral negotiations are underway, uh, are still ongoing regarding the awarding of the project to Umgeni Water. Now following uh, Chairperson on the visit the president paid to Cote d'Ivoire during um, uh, 2020, 2020 20 to 23 July 2022, the department facilitate submission of a proposal for dredging services for the autonomous port of Abidjan uh, by a South African state-owned entity, Transnet National Post Authority. I have disappeared. Apologies, I had just disappeared. And working with the Department of Transport, we also facilitated approval of Air Côte d'Ivoire application for foreign operators permit. The, the airline commenced its operation in South Africa on 1st of July, 2022. Uh, the, the Air Côte d'Ivoire flight will operate the fastest route between Johannesburg and Abidjan, completed under eight hours chairperson. We believe that this route will contribute to increase traffic between the two countries and between South Africa and West Africa. And in turn, it will also increase trade and investment between our two regions, including, of course, the issue of tourism promotion. We also facilitated 
uh, the defense equipment procurement from Cote d'Ivoire and Niger in South uh, Niger uh, valued at approximately Euro 60 million and 57 million respectively. Supported Westgro wine export uh, promotion mission to Abidjan in April 2022. With regard to Senegal, uh, through facilitating engagements between NetBank and Senegalese Embassy, the department supported NetBank's participation in the recently concluded Euro 152 million debt financing for Minister of Economy, Finance and Planning in the area of supporting procurement of the firefighting equipment, uh, biomedical equipment, communication and transmission equipment, as well as a field hospital. Chairperson on Ghana, through facilitating engagements between the government of Ghana and a South African company, the South African High Commission in, Ga in Accra facilitated the signing of the rail management agreement between the South African, the government of Ghana um, and a South African company for the upgrading of the Western Rail Line in, in, in Ghana. The High Commission in Accra made input as well into the DBSA's due diligence on a road construction project in Ghana. The project is valued at Euro 270 million and the DBSA is interested in finding 15% of the total value. With regard to Nigeria, Chairperson, there are approximately 120 South African companies operating in Nigeria in various uh, areas, including telecommunication, financial services, hospitality, media, and entertainment. The department convened and hosted a business showcase between the aviation sector and the West Africa and uh, West Africa in May 2022. And this chairperson was, in, in our view, a very big achievement in that they started moving their pilot training from the US and Europe to South Africa. We also led the operationalization of the South Africa Nigeria Joint Ministerial Advisory Council on Industry, Trade and Investment. This will unlock a lot more uh, trade between our two countries, with Ni Nigeria uh, being such a populous country uh, with a lot of opportunities and prospects for trade. Chair. So looking at SADC as our regional body, uh, regional and global interests chair lie at the heart of South Africa's foreign policy. Hence, SADC is a key component of the South Africa's foreign policy, which aims at promoting political and socioeconomic integration among its member states and to achieve peace, security, and sustainable development, allowing the region to address the key challenges of underdevelopment, unemployment, and poverty. SADC's primary goal, therefore, Chairperson, is to foster regional political and economic integration and continue to serve as the primary vehicle for South Africa's foreign policy to achieve regional development and integration within the Southern Africa region. In achieving this, SADC is guided by its blueprint, namely the SADC Vision 2050 and the Regional Indicative Strategic Framework or Plan of 2020 to 2030, the Industrialization Strategy and Roadmap um, of 2015-2063, and the Regional Infrastructure Development Master Plan. In this regard, in terms of uh, SADC integration, in terms of SADC economic integration, the Council of Ministers held uh, in March 2022 of this year, reiterated the importance of industrialization in uplifting the livelihood of the people of the SADC region. 
Industrialization has taken a center stage chair in regional integration agenda. Hence, the industrialization strategy is premised on the conviction that regional integration will promote industrialization and the success of partnership consisting of government, the private sector, civil society, labor, and the development partners. To achieve the minimum threshold for protocol on industry to come into force, it is important that SADC member states who are yet to ratify the protocol on industry and uh, tripartite free trade area should do so. Uh, of course, we use our various mechanisms to keep asking or requesting countries to, to ratify this protocol so that it can come into force. The operationalization of the SADC industrialization strategy and roadmap is done through SADC programs and programs and projects in line with the following focus areas, Chair. Uh, Agro-processing, mineral beneficiation, and energy. Pharmaceuticals, boosting skills to enhance regional integration, creating a mechanism for the involvement of the private sector. Also critical to the objective of regional economic integration is the realization of the tripartite free trade area, as well as the continental free trade area, AFCFTA, both aimed at boosting industrial and infrastructure development, enhancing intra-regional trade. Chair will be aware that uh, in Ju July 2021, the World Health Organization uh, facilitated, uh, we facilitated together with the World Health Organization, the establishment of an mRNA vaccine technology transfer in South Africa. This uh, facility is up and running, and we are, we are yet to see um, a lot of benefits arising from this engagement from the, from the mRNA vaccine technology transfer hub in South Africa. Uh, we have already been able to produce some vaccines from there, uh, which um, were used on the continent uh, around the whole issue of the COVID pandemic. There was also um, um, the granting of Johnson & Johnson uh, intellectual property license to produce um, a span of X Aspen of X by a South African company, Aspen Pharmaceutical. That in itself also has created a number of jobs in that part of the country, Chair. SADC Free Trade Area. The Southern African Development Community became a free trade area in 2008. Uh, for the economic integration of its members. South Africa is one of the 13 member states that contributed to the consolidation of the free trade area by acceding to the SADC protocol on trade. South Africa has been the leading importer and exporter in inter-African trade for the past decade, Chair. The country has also led and entered a duty-free South, Southern African Customs Union, SACU, and the Free Trade Agreement, FTA, in the SADC region. Engagement of both Angola and SADC and the DRC regarding accession to the SADC free trade area. Uh, in terms of our own facilitation, we've ensured that uh, the DRC and Angola accede to the SADC free trade area. Angola's tariffs offer are uh, under review by member states. The offer does not address all technical issues raised by SACU and the SADC member states. In the interim, South African goods uh, are entering Angola uh, and DRC on a most favored nation principle. According to this principle, Chairperson, uh, it seeks to ensure that no country is left behind uh, in terms of its products so that a, a country, a one country is favored over the other. The principle indicates that no country must be more favored 
uh, than any other. There's a principle of equality among countries when it comes to the issue of trade around this principle. The, the free trade area also affords South Africa products preferential market access into the respective SADC member states. The free trade area provides for elimination of all forms of trade barriers, Chair. A greater and easy market access implies greater demand for South African products, therefore increased production, which could lead to job creation in Southern Africa and South Africa, of course. South Africa is still heavily in, uh, dependent on mineral commodity exports, which also are also amongst its top exports to the Southern African development community. Chairperson, if we look at the figures uh, that have been placed on the slide, uh, even though the value, uh, total value of exports from South Africa to SADC decreased uh, to USD 17 billion, by approximately 18.2% of total exports in 2018 from an average of US, US dollar 19.9 billion, which amounts to approximately 24.4% of total export exports. The value of the top five exports from South Africa to SADC increased to USD 3.7 billion in 2018 from an annual average of US, US dollars at 3.6 billion from 2015 to 2017. South Africa's top five exports to SADC are petroleum, commercial vehicles, diamonds, and fertilizers, which constituted 4.0 of total exports in 2018. Of uh, 2015, uh, okay, let me leave it there. Though the free trade area, Southern Africa has become an important uh, destination for South African exports. However, growing presence of countries, uh, of some countries in the region we have which have taken a lot of interest in the region really does threaten uh, market access in the region. However, I think Chairperson, what really should give us comfort is our proximity to the region. Uh, even though some of those countries are big, uh, but the issue of proximity might stand in our favor. There are some challenges that we have uh, noted in our engagements across the continent, Chair. Um, among those are the issue of investment after care for South African companies, which have at times required of us to engage um, minister uh, and or even at the level of president for their intervention to ensure that our companies are treated well and that they continue to do the best they can in providing product uh, or services to the countries where they invest without a lot of red tape or challenges that they, may, they might encounter in the pursuit of their business interests. There's also the issue of foreign competition within a traditional market, which I have referred to. And here I've indicated that perhaps the issue of proximity and pricing might, might stand in good stead for us as South Africa, uh, because it doesn't take much to export to the continent, within the continent, and also in line with the continental free trade area. The, 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 the Perceived uh, anti-foreigner sentiment uh, we, within the country uh, chair, we, we see it as a, a challenge because it, it, has an, um, it has a possibility of impacting or affecting our national interests abroad, particularly on the continent. Uh, there's a whole idea where they have seen an event happen towards uh, foreigners in South Africa there is some kind of reciprocation that we can expect from across the continent. So we do caution uh, around some of the uh, developments that we have seen play out uh, in the country. 
And uh, in our bilateral engagements, we also engage our partners around these issues to ensure that uh, we are in harmony with each other. There's also a, an issue of difficulty in repatriating some of our profits that our companies um, have accrued in the various countries of the continent. And this is somewhat also due to the unavailability of Forex in some parts of the continent. And this has caused some of our companies to exit certain markets. Uh, so this, this matter is also one of those very challenging uh, issues that um, we believe will be addressed in due course. Um, we have also noted uh, delays in the issuance of visas for business, conferences, and tourists, um, we, which is uh, something that we are in discussions with our Home Affairs Department on. And we do believe that some of the challenges that we have experienced will uh, find resolution um, because, uh, because of our continued engagement with our uh, sister department. There are also challenges with energy security um, and the capacity of our ports that uh, members will be aware of, and which I believe and we believe as a branch, the country is engaged with and trying to resolve these energy issues to ensure that our products, products are able to leave the country um, on time and within the right price and with, with, within a good state. Some of the recommendations we'd like to make as Branch Africa Chair, we need to strengthen South Africa's business forums. We also need to engage, um, uh, increase engagement with chambers of commerce and, um, and, and, and government. There's also a need to continue to work on this whole issue of South Africa Incorporated, particularly to ensure that our investments across the continent are protected and that we do not hear of companies having left a particular market without having been able to intervene prior to them departing the market. So the mechanism that the minister mentioned in her opening remarks, the COMED, Coordination Mechanism for Economic Diplomacy, will, among other things, address some of those challenges to ensure, ensure that we stay on the continent and, and, and do as much as we can in partnership with our companies. There's, there's need to ensure rapid response mechanisms for pandemics and any other emergencies that have the effect of disrupting trade and value chains, which we have seen uh, during the, the, the pandemic uh, period, um, which our president was very much um, pivotal in ensuring that the entire continent is not left behind uh, the no negotiations that ensued uh, to ensure that um, so, uh, the continent will have opportunity to produce some of the vaccines is one such achievement that has arisen from our engagement in the multilateral fora around this issue of ensuring that pandemics do not keep us down and our trade down. We need to strengthen our holding of quarterly meetings um, in terms of sectoral departments so that we do not wait until a joint commission takes place or a binational takes place before we engage um, countries of the continent around the structured bilateral mechanisms that we referred to earlier on, Chairperson. I wish to thank you, Chair, Honorable Members, and the Minister for allowing us to make this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aousia Akakilebo Hile Tata.
Honorable members, we received confirmation from the minister that what was happening was nothing serious. It was just a normal drill in as far as uh, fire safety is concerned. So the minister and the collective are back in the building now. Everything is, is in order. There's the presentation. Honorable members, can we... We, we have hands. I, I see the hand of Honorable Hendricks and Honorable Faber. Chair. Honorable Nkosi and Honorable Mpanza. Chair, can I ask for your indulgence? And indulgence? Oh, because you are leaving. We'll start with you, yeah. Yes, Chair, thanks. How can be, you, you'll just also follow after after honorable faber and then honorable bergman you will follow after honorable Unkosi. yes honorable Banza. no thanks very much uh, chair for allowing me to start first and uh, also <clears throat> well done in the interview that uh, <clears throat> you had with the nca3 and we're looking forward to the second round where we'll be talking about the economic policies. Yeah, uh, you're putting yeah. controversial things into the economy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. I'm more interested. Uh, I will be very much interested in the economic one uh, because it will also be touching uh, on issues like this one. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Chair, uh, thanks very much. Uh, let me welcome the presentation. I think it's a very good presentation and uh, uh, very enlightening and uh, very much empowering. Uh, because one was not, uh, I was not aware that <clears throat> so much work has been done on the ground uh, in terms of um, economic diplomacy and uh, <clears throat> forging uh, trade relations and also looking at the national interest of South Africa uh, by the, <clears throat> uh, uh, what is it, uh, the chief director, uh, um, 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 Yes, uh, but um, as much as one would uh, appreciate the information, but Chair, uh, I just want to ask a, a question uh, that says, yes, of course, the minister talked about the three triple challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. But how is this uh, translating down to the levels where people are? Uh, because we can talk about the multi conglomerates and multinational companies and all those things. But I think uh, <clears throat> ourselves, uh, as you always uh, raise the issue, Chair, of uh, the past imbalances uh, when it comes to uh, economic empowerment. Uh, South Africa is still unequal uh, when it comes to economic opportunities. And the, of course, this is, uh, even if other people, they always uh, dispute this, uh, it's but it is true. It's uh, informed by the legacies of colonial apartheid, uh, which <clears throat> was with us uh, for almost uh, 300 years, and uh, the damage uh, that has been done will will take years also uh, to <clears throat> to correct. But initiatives like this, this they are very much important. But how is this translating? Uh, to the grassroots. Uh, this, uh, I'm asking this in terms of uh, the township economy and also uh, the rural economy. How, how a, man, a person, a woman, or the men in the street, uh, those who are selling uh, on the streets, uh, the street vendors, how are they benefiting this? How is this? going to filter down uh, uh, to, 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 to that level. Because if we don't uh, em empower 
the marginalized communities, those who are in the peripheries of the economic mainstream, in the townships, in the villages, uh, <clears throat> and uh, in the informal settlements. Uh, this uh, benef economic benefits will be an elitist, you know, uh, exercise that is benefiting those who have already been uh, <clears throat> benefited, uh, maybe through black uh, and economic empowerment, uh, those who have already been uh, privileged uh, in terms of uh, the previous apartheid system. And then uh, the people uh, at the grass level, the grassroots level, will always be left uh, outside. Uh, because uh, if uh, we don't do that, uh, the things that we have seen last year in, in July, the unrest and the looting and all those things, uh, will uh, always happen. And uh, <clears throat> we are sitting in a, in a, in a time bomb. The, the, the high levels of unemployment of our youth, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that is a, a worrying factor. So as much as uh, this is very much important, Chair, but I really want uh, to hear something that will say there are clear programs uh, from the department. Yes, of course, the department <clears throat> might not be dealing with these things directly, but uh, in terms of intergovernmental relations with the other lead departments that are, dealing, well, that are coming from the economic cluster, they can work together. Uh, so this is uh, my cry, Chair, uh, that really uh, I really want to hear from the presenters or the department uh, to them saying this is a plan that will come up with tangible benefits uh, to our uh, communities uh, in those areas that I've mentioned. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Mbanza. Honorable Hendricks, you can go, Honorable Mbanza. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Very much, Honorable Chair. I would just like the Honorable Mbanza to stay because I would like him to hear that uh, Aldama is meeting tomorrow uh, a, a mission from the United Nations uh, with our constituency in the townships to see how they can take people out of poverty by uh, various means, including trade. So I would like oh. to compliment uh, the Department of International Relations uh, for, for uh, setting uh, the seat for that. I agree with uh, Honorable Mapanza that uh, it is very important that all these wonderful uh, ground laying initiatives of the Department of International Relations go down to the townships. And um, for example, uh, uh, two weeks ago, I was in Atlisville and there were 200 Muslim African female entrepreneurs that I had to address on different issues. And one of the issues that they raised was how can they be part of the halal market uh, that the presenter referred to. That is a few trillion dollars market where uh, South Africa can play a very important role in supplying allowed products. And I know that different provinces have been hard at work and I'm very happy that it's still top of mind as far as international relations is concerned. But coming back to the townships, um, this Saturday we're having a master class in Crowdville. I don't know if honorable members know where Crowdville is, but that is where Chief Albert Latuli is buried and where he was banished to and where every ANC president has to visit once they are elected as president of the country. So that community, they grow peanuts on the riverbanks, the best peanuts in the country. And Aldama is assisting them now with peanut butter manufacturing. And guess what? At the first meeting, they told me that they want the peanut butter to be allowed and to be transported all over the world. Just imagine Chief Albert Latuli peanut butter all over the world to honor 
one of our great uh, Nobel Peace Prize winners and leaders. The government has just given a fishing vessel to Mapami Village. I don't know if honorable members know where Mapami Village is, but it is a rural village uh, an hour from Mutata that has an ocean with 13 fish. So I was very interested to hear that uh, Mauritian, Mauritius, uh, they are very keen uh, to taste, uh, uh, to get South African fish. So w with regard to the uh, advice given by Honorable Mapanja, Mapanju, uh, that is where international relations should see if we can't get that fish caught by the fishing vessel that government has now given to these, to this co-op and villages, can't that fish be exported uh, to Mauritius instead of the wholesaler uh, that they uh, refer to? There's also lastly, Honorable Chair, a reference to uh, the textile uh, uh, initiative in Ladysmith. The textile and clothing contribution, the Western Cape is the heart of uh, used to be the heart of uh, uh, dressmaking textiles and uh, we need uh, the facility that is in Ladysmith to be in Cape Town and uh, the colored community and Cape Flats are continuously marginalized and it is time that we get international support to revive the clothing industry especially in the in the Western Cape. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chair, and I would like to compliment the presenter for one of the best reports I've heard during my term uh, in the sixth parliament, and I hope that she is willing to do presentations uh, to our constituencies, especially in the townships, business people, entrepreneurs, to understand the good work that the Department of International Relations is doing and how they can leverage on the campaigns. So I would also like to suggest to the minister, uh, if she's still around, that maybe there must be a special uh, a person or a mission uh, uh, for small business. I serve on the portfolio committee. I'm very excited what I heard. I'm gonna share it with the portfolio committee uh, uh, today. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thanks, Honorable Hendricks. That is one of the reasons why in this committee, we agreed that uh, we need to have at the community level, villages and townships, community-based international relations oversight forums. Uh, those oversight forums, among other things, they are going to be dealing with matters of the nature that you raised and that Memo Kwena reported on on behalf of the department. So. I'm just re-emphasizing the point that you are making that economy at a micro level is very, very important. And we agree with you. Memo Kwena, there's extra work for you from Honorable Hendricks. He says you may have to go to the townships and make the same presentations. Honorable Faba. Thank you, Chairperson. I just thought I was for a while in a different committee when um, listening to the feedback from other members. Chairperson, yes. Um, my, my first um, way on this is that I do feel that this presentation should have been a joint presentation to trade and industry as well as with us, as obviously most of this fall in the Department yeah. of Trade Industry. So, so my feeling was to maybe just do a suggestion um, of its, of its, its this cycle, way. but that we do have a, a joint meeting with yeah. trade and industry on this. Chairperson, there's some disturbance. Yes. Oh, I thought it's you. Maybe there's a radio. If there's anybody. Honorable Hendricks. Honorable Hendricks. It's not my pants, it's a pants. Honorable Hendricks, can you see show? Trouble here. Can uh, the can call and, um, 
can you try and phone honorable Andres or can you you mute him from the base operator? Absolutely seconded. Absolutely seconded. Thank you, Member. So, okay. So, we have now a, a way forward um, on this matter. Can somebody help to, Honorable Andres? All the stands in place. Um, I think it is important that uh, we continue this. Uh, um, we will write this report. We will get a, a legal opinion and we will We're come in back to, uh, uh, to both. So, so you are an IT person in the meeting. It's already implemented in the halal market. With respect, the host must kick him off. Yeah, Th thank you, Chairperson. I, I think I um, am I um, audible. Thank you. Can some can any member just say if I'm audible now? You are on uh, audible, Honourable Faber. Thank, thank, thank I can you, hear you. Sir. Yes. Um, yeah, Chairperson, I did think that multitasking was a bit of a problem to Al Jamal with so little members. So this is maybe why we got a bit of a, a mixed communication. He might have been on the wrong um, portfolio committee at this stage. Chairperson, yes. The, the first um, feeling that I've got, as I said, was that we should have a joint committee meeting maybe with trade and industry on this. It was very informative. Thank you for the presentation. There was, however, a few issues I would like to address. Um, starting when we were looking at the country specifics, we were talking about Kenya on trains. I'm not going to go into that because I've been at Kudus Puerto a while, well, a few years ago as in NCOP where we, the um, factory was empty, but we were importing trains, but let that be it. Um, then we are talking about government printing of Kenya. Chairperson, I'm concerned. We couldn't even print our own licenses a year ago. Minister Mbalula, we're talking about the one machine that we do have, which was in for repairs, and, and we want to support Kenya. So if we can get clarity, if, if it's the same type of printing, because we're talking about government, um, from what I understand, government documents like licenses, IDs, etc. cetera. Um, and we didn't have the capacity to even do our own licensing with a bad backlog. So that was my second point. Then on the SADC exports, um, where we see that um, we're talking about petroleum. We, you know, we've got energy, we've got trade and industry, we've got a lot of role players in this. And, and there's, we need to know, are we making money? Are we subsidizing other countries? Um, there's, there is, this is such, it's like in the old days in Afrikaans, we say this whole subject is as... Um, we're talking about almost everything in one, one, one small package. So, so, so that I feel that trade and industry and energy should also be into maybe tell us, are we making money? Is there profits? Are we maybe subsidizing other countries? As we know, some of our own trucks go just around the corner to Mozambique and they go and fill up with Mozambique fuel um, for much cheaper um, and we supply them. Um, Chairperson, then my fourth point is with BRICS. I've not seen anything of BRICS here. Now, obviously, if we're talking about economic dip uh, diplomacy contributing to South African domestic challenges, surely BRICS must be somehow playing a role in this. We, we've heard stories about, oh, we know the BRICS bank is there, and we've even heard stories about the BRICS currency and other members that want to come in, etc. So, um, I would like to get some clarity. Why don't we even hear anything about BRICS? Don't they play a role in this? Um, so, so that will be my first inputs. Thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity, and thanks for the presentation.
chairperson, chairperson, anyone there that I speak to myself? No, you did you as well. I think that chair is correct. Thank you. It seems that the chairperson may have been uh, cut off. Is it possible for another member to assist with the chair? Ah, the chair's back. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much, Honorable Father. Honorable Msani. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and, and thank you very much for the presentation. Although I see quite a few shortfalls that we might have, um regarding the economic trade and diplomacy that we have as africans interstate with each other first and foremost chairperson i don't see um, us focusing too much on how we are going to be implementing the african continental free trade agreement on projects such as uh building of roads and rails and ports um, amongst ourselves as Africans. I know there's a separate program that is called a PIDA. Maybe one day when we get the opportunity, we should request the department to bring that uh, se section of the department to come and make a presentation on what projects is currently, is PIDA currently involved in, because I know they also do um, energy and they also do border gates like your one stop border gate which is a project that started a while back so we need to focus more on for economy to be sustainable and for economy to be smooth we need uh, infrastructure such as roads and and and, and your rail and then the second thing chairperson maybe the minister can also assist us when they are sitting in the AU. What um, is the plan of the African continent on maybe establishing a continental uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing company? Because um, Africa relies mostly on imports for our pharmaceuticals. And I'm hoping that as the African continent, we would have learned a thing or two with the vaccine apartheid that we've seen during the pandemic. And um, I appreciate what uh, Memo Kwena has said about these challenges on the anti-foreigner uh, that, that's rising in South Africa. I wish that this department can really take this sentiment very serious and um, make awareness to ordinary South Africans so that they can see what impact this anti-foreigner um, stance that they are starting to have at South Africa is, is uh, the damage that it's causing to our trade, to our neighbors, to our relations. Because she also made a very critical point on saying that, you know, as South Africa, we have more than 120 companies that are currently operating in Nigeria. But the sentiment that South Africans have is that, you know, Nigerians must go home. And some of these companies actually do take South Africans to go and start up these companies, to go and implement um, maybe senior uh, management in Nigeria. So we need to educate our society what it means when we have su such sentiments as anti-foreigner sen sentiments. And also a very other critical challenge that the department is raising and us as politicians will need to strongly look at is our rapid response mechanism. We are seeing as the African continent, maybe minister when also you were sitting with other African state uh, heads of state, we can raise this issue. You know, it's not only the pandemic that um, showed that Africa is a very slow responsive uh, continent, but also the insurgencies that keep rising in the African continent. We are not quick in responding and curbing insurgencies 
even when we have finally developed that there is an insurgency, like in Mozambique, it would last for long, it lasts for years. And that also um, is caused because of our minerals and because in, 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 in Mozambique, it was caused because of the gas. So these insurgencies have a tendency of rising from the West and coming to South Africa, in Africa to destabilize the continent, thus then disturbing our trade amongst each other. So we need to act in a united form as the African continent in, in curbing uh, these surgences. Other than that, uh, Chairperson, I would have appreciated if um, the, the presentation included more important, or not to say that these ones that they presented is not important, but more important um, exports like your tin minerals and uh, your coffee, your pharmaceutical scientific products and uh, maybe medical products, how Africa is trading with each other on such uh, minerals. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, Austembi. Honorable Nkosi. Honorable Bergman. Yeah, thank you. Thank oh, you Honorable Ngozi, that's fine. Honorable Bergman or me? Yeah, no, it's you, Brock. Honorable Ngozi, sorry. <laughs> I thought maybe you are muted. No, I'm not. No, thanks, Chairperson. And uh, I, I, I wish to welcome the input by the department led by the minister. Um, and uh, the input uh, is aptly delivered by. Uh, Mrs. Ms. Makuwe. I, I, I just first want to ask a, a general question that relates to oversight before I go to the specific question. I just want to ask the department whether myself as a member located in Pretoria uh, can, can come into the department to conduct oversight on my own um, and take those learnings back to this committee because I think uh, closest to the department, it's easier for me to do that. Or at the second, at the second level, I, there are a number of people I know in the department. Uh, can I, in an unstructured way, uh, interact with them and then bring those issues to this committee? While I think there's nothing that prevents me from doing so, I believe in a structured relationship between the department and the portfolio committee based on uh, our strike plan. So. If the department allows it, I can walk into Soap Pan building, uh, I mean, OR Tambo on Soap Pan anytime. Uh, but with that as it may, my questions are as follows, Chair. I, I take from the last point made by uh, uh, Ms. Makue on uh, quarterly sec sectoral meetings. And my questions are one, is there prior planning uh, done between the department and all other departments involved in binational commissions before we even agree on and accept uh, the areas that in which we are going to be involved in those uh, bilateral, bilateral uh, relations? And related to that is um, in the African continent, how many bilaterals do we have and how often do we evaluate and assess the impact that these are making in those countries, but, but, but also in South Africa? In other words, what are the offsprings uh, and the gains that we make from the direct foreign investments that we make in those countries? There, there, is, there are two major projects that are happening in the continent, particularly past in the past year, the Google, uh, or I think it's Google, uh, is laying a cable uh, in the continent, I think from the north to the south, uh, to enable easy connectivity. What are the benefits uh, that the department has assessed or is about to assess of this laying of that cable? Uh, it's not done by, uh, by and through government. It's a, it, it's a private sector initiative. But surely the department should be aware that in no time, in less than 10 years, 
connectivity will improve uh, because of the laying of this additional cable on the continent. The second thing is that in the center, central and part of Northern Africa, there are gas exploitation, explorations, sorry, that are directed to Euro to intervene in the, in the wake of uh, the gas problems that Europe has. Has the department taken note of that? Uh, and are we ensuring that as a continent, we benefit from those? Uh, it's, it's a project that has been revived. It has been there for many years, but in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine crisis, it's, uh, it's revived. Uh, Chair, the other question is, how do we address problems, particularly those faced by South African companies in the host countries? I, I noted in the slides that there is something referred to as post um, investment uh, management. But often we do find that uh, South African companies face uh, serious problems uh, in, in host countries. Related to that, how does the department ensure that South African companies do not undermine labor laws in the host countries and, and bring practices that will not be tolerated in South Africa itself. We've had complaints, uh, for example, in, in uh, Kenya or, uh, that South African companies bring uh, unfair labor practices um, when, when they uh, engage in economic activity in those countries. Um, in, 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 a, in a joint uh, meeting between ourselves and Thank you very and, much. Uh, yeah? uh, it's finished. There's no hand. You must go Hello? to the show. Sorry, sorry. Am I sorry. finished? May I continue, Chair? Thank you, Minda. May I continue? Honorable Faber must must do what he said must be done to... Yeah, continue, Honorable Nkosi. Yeah. I say in a joint meeting between ourselves and GPIC, uh, GTIC, sorry, we were informed about the revamping of the rail network in SADEC to ensure connectivities of all harbors um, and, and ports. What is the progress uh, with, in regards to that? Um, Chair, the other issue relates to gas and oil explorations in both Mozambique and uh, Namibia. Uh, is the department in discussion with sister departments uh, to look at the economic, uh, potential economic benefits of these for South Africa? And is there a, a way of positioning South African companies uh, to leverage on these explorations? That's the first part of the question. The second part of the question, are we in discussions with DPE or minerals and energy on possible uh, exploration of SAID? Uh, in our on our shores or uh, uh, the territorial waters that belong to South Africa. The last question, Chair, is, is a general question around government and business initiatives. It's clear that the in in government there is no coordination, in, and I'm making this with caution. There is no coordination between DECO and the economic sector. Uh, departments in, in, in with regard to investment attraction and driving investment in the continent and elsewhere. What, what are these mechanisms? Why are they not there? And how often do we engage in those mechanisms to ensure that uh, we speak as South African Inc.? Secondly, what is the relationship between business and government? Uh, in a structured way that drives uh, uh, South Africa Inc. in its engagement in the continent. The experience is that government-led uh, initiatives often tend to be reported directly through DECO and GTIC, but private sector-led initiatives are often not reported or they're reported only when there are difficulties and problems that these experience. Thank you, Chairperson. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Nkosi. Honorable Darkma. Chair, thanks very much. Um, I, I'm uh, glad I went after Honorable Nkosi because he asks a very important question about oversight, and <laughs> I think it's one which the courts and the judge answers, but it's one also that if a lot of our MPs went on their in induction course, they would learn a lot about what their job is actually entails. And uh, a lot of the time, we, we there's, often we don't do our jobs properly because either we don't know our jobs, or we're too lazy to do our jobs, or we're too scared to do our jobs, or we actually maybe, you know, we corrupt ourselves. And what the, court, what the court was saying is that a member of parliament has what's called the power of oversight. And one of the reasons they have the power of oversight is so that certain MPs that don't believe in fairy tales, like uh, that don't believe that the official is going to write us a report that says this official was corrupt and this official beats their employee and this official takes leave all the time. Those, uh, those MPs that are not so gullible would then rather go on oversight and see for themselves. And I think it's important then that those MPs, that they're still good MPs that do their jobs, that are not scared or lazy or corrupt, but actually know their job description. And what you would find is those MPs that actually do oversight and don't do oversight because they invited into a nice red carpet uh, building because they announced that they're coming and they no, I take don't intervene. I, I take very serious underance to the insinuation made by by Honorable Bergman. In the first place, I'm not directing the question to him. He's got no response. No, no. Yeah, it's a, it's a point of order, Chair. Let, let and me what's say the order? I no. You're not chairing this meeting. Can you keep quiet? Well, you don't know, I don't speak. know if you know your point of order, if you don't know what oversight no, is. No, just, just shut up for now. Just shut I up. Honorable, no, honorable no, no, learn, no, your, learn your job. No, sure. Honorable Bergman. No, no wonder your own party tells you to shut up. Chair, may I... Honorable uh, Bergman. I did not... That's why his own party interrupts him. No, Chair. May I, may I please uh, intervene on my behalf? I don't need this okay, intervention okay. by this member. Okay, Honorable Bergman, let's hear what is the point of order. Honorable yes, Kosi, please. I was going yeah, to caution you. The reason why I spoke, Honorable Bergman, I was going to caution you that yeah, your Jeff, focus I... your focus is on issues raised by another member and not the report presented. But yes, let's no, hear, I'm Honorable Kosi. No, no, Chair, may, may, may I just apologize for using the word shut up. I, I think uh, I got a bit... Uh, Okay. I got a bit carried out. I, I, I unconditionally apologize for, for so Okay, saying. no problem. Uh, I, I'm just saying that, Chair, that the, the question I directed is directed to the department on structured uh, oversight. Uh, I do not need an, 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 an intervention by this honorable member uh, trying to teach me what he thinks subjectively uh, his understanding of uh, of oversight and please ask him to desist from doing that otherwise i will interject <clears throat> thank you very much honorable Nkosi. by the time you came in honorable Nkosi, i was about to plead with honorable bergman to come to the subject matter and as you say your, your question was directed at the department and matters related to how we can do oversight. That's a matter that we can discuss as a committee on our own without uh, the department uh, being there. So, Honorable Erman, I think you went a bit overboard by in Sorry, the process. Chair. Yes, a bit overboard, but I get your point, what, what you are trying Thank to you, say. Thank you, so, I always just like to help my colleagues when they... Uh, sorry, I was just helping. Okay, um, let's come back to the subject matter. Hey, I, hey, do. I don't need your help. Chair, take it. <laughs> um, okay. okay, Honorable Bergman, let's proceed. Right. Chair, in cool terms down, of... Cool down, cool down, Honorable Members. Proceed, Honorable Bergman. 
It's just the one member, Shane. Uh, Chair, with regards to the um, what we've got in terms of what the presentation, which I agree with, um, is a is is a very broad presentation, and I, and I think important. Starting with BRICS, I, and I think your input yesterday, understanding with BRICS is that um, when it came with again, and I mentioned it last time, with, with uh, you know with our position in terms of the Russia Ukraine. In BRICS yesterday, you saw that Brazil, India, China, they've all managed to leverage a lot more um, from Russia in terms of their um, membership with BRICS and with what's happening in Ukraine. And unfortunately, I think it's just South Africa that hasn't managed to uh, leverage more to assist the the um, pockets of a normal South African or in any South African in terms of a better, let's say, discount. And as I mentioned, as examples, were oil or fertilizer or anything that we, we we get from Russia, or concessions that we would get from BRICS, were negotiated through our membership in BRICS. And I, I was hoping that one of the speeches or one of the inputs um, would have spoken to that. And and I'm hoping that we we still have time to use that um, opportunity to to get there. And then when it comes to the inputs, um, again, agreeing with my sister, um, the, infra, the intra-Africa trade is most vital to Africa. And that's where our focus has to be. Intra-Africa trade is at 1.7% of our GDP or of, of intra-Africa GDP, which is very, very low. And part of that problem, as I always say, is actually infrastructure so it's, it's i know that when president zuma was in the chair he focused on wanting to build a highway from the north to the south and from the west to the east and i and i and i think it's important that we look at how we can first before we even look at the free trade agreements is how are we looking to get infrastructure between the countries in africa that you can move trucks you can move trade between the countries that we can increase the trade within our countries. Now, when you look at free trade, it's not just the infrastructure, but it's also our borders. And again, what we saw during COVID and what we see a lot during riots or um, uh, uh, um, uh, let me say unpeaceful times, we see the closing of borders. And some of these can take uh, truck drivers will be on borders for five days and stuck for five days without water or food or whatever the case may be because countries don't talk to each other. Now, the problem with this, and I know that it's not our department, and I've often asked the minister in questions, and I'm, I'm hoping that the minister again will, will take this up in the cabinet, but we, we've got a double border system, and maybe we can start in SADC, but then we can push it to African Union. The double border system is going to cost us both in corruption, cost us in costs, and cost us in delays. And if the one of the biggest barriers to free trade agreements is a double border system, because where you're looking for, uh, where you're looking to provide a quicker movement of, of goods, to have a delay on a border because the one border has delayed you and the other border wants to facilitate you, you know, you've got a problem. And, and one of the best examples of this is often people phone me and say, look, listen, I've just been stuck on the South African border going into, let's say, Botswana or Swaziland or, or whatever. And my advice to them, besides trying to get through to one of the, um, embassies in those countries is to just try another border because what one border guard might say in one border another border guard will say something different and nine times out of ten that's exactly what happens they get stuck on the one border but then they go to the other border gates and they get let in no problem so what you're seeing is with one border gates that would that, that would all change now that type of that type of reciprocity should be looked at straight away especially with the introduction of the bma and visas, and visas is a pet hate of mine, as the minister knows, because the previous minister, Malusi Gigaba, had already promised many countries that they would either be visa free, or that they would they would already be on e visas. Now, for a lot of these countries in Africa, we can land in Africa, and we can get our visas issued while we land. We don't have to get returned back to the, our country. They can actually issue those visas as we wait in the airport line. And I think that the minister has to push her counterpart in home affairs to start pushing for these e-visas. A lot of the time, 
they are more hindrance than 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 a than a reward. We don't get a lot of money for it, but we scare off a lot of investment, and we scare off a lot of tourism, because people that are bringing a lot of uh, tourism dollars are, are actually getting scared off because it takes so long between a diplomatic bag or between the actual processing of the visa. It takes so long for them to actually get the visa here that they actually they decide that they'd rather go to another country and rather do it there. And I know that, again, uh, 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 Councillor Lamsani said last time about America and that it could be racial profiling. No, America and Britain, they do have their delays. They've got their delay in processing, and they, they just like South Africa. Every country has their delay in processing, so it's not just prone to South Africa. And it's not a racial thing necessarily. Everyone it was also prone to it. I mean, it can take you 180 days in South Africa to get an appointment. But these type of things in South Africa is if we can get it right here, we can attract tourism and investment from our African countries into to Africa. But one of the biggest advertising posts for it is how we treat our fellow South Africa, how we treat our fellow Africans. And I'm not talking necessarily just about the ZEPs. I'm talking about how we would treat the the idea of how we go about processing the ZDP. So uh, you know, someone that's been entrenched, uh, they have a, we've already given them a bank account, we've already allowed them to buy a car. That person surely, surely, there's a way to entrench that person into South Africa far better than a person that is committing crime in South Africa. So there has to be a way in which we catch those that don't belong in South Africa. And we, we get them out of, of South Africa, we process them out of South Africa, but those that belong in South Africa or that have been in South Africa for long enough to have had a bank account or be part entrenched in the system, that we treat them like, like uh, we, we treat them better. In terms of uh, our, our, our policies, and I'm, I know that we're gonna have a presentation on the national interest, so I'm gonna leave a lot of that for them, but our hypocrisy in how we deal with a lot of our counterparts in SADC and, and the AU, we got to be more. We got to be more consistent. You know how we, we will interfere in the DRC, but we won't interfere in Zimbabwe. Um, we're getting to a stage now where Rwanda and the DRC are on the eastern front. So it's getting it's getting quite nasty, and SADC is going to have to intervene at some stage, and it's going to be a conflict of interest for South Africa. And the, the minister is going to be called upon, or the president is going to be called upon. And we should have a principle of when to engage or when not to engage, and not just a loyalty to people or loyalty to a country on based on on the past, but rather uh, based on principle. And one of the important things that South Africa with with money can play is election monitoring. That when it comes to uh, a diary of a lot of electioneering that's taking place on our continent, we can boost SADC or we can boost ourselves with more election monitoring, which I think is needed in a case of, of Africa. I don't think it's up to the EU or to America or to anyone else to tell Africa whether the election is free or fair. I think we would know more about the, the climate in Africa. And an election monitoring doesn't start two weeks before an election. Of course, the election monitoring starts straight after the last uh, election takes place. And I think there are ways in which South Africa could lead the election monitoring in this, in, on the continent. And then just while the ministers, yeah, in terms of the grey listing and terrorism that has been mentioned, well, the terrorism that has been mentioned, the, that, that is a risk to us, the grey listing is the biggest risk to South Africa in terms of financing because of the effect that it can have on the pockets of all our people in, in, in South Africa. So how we negate this? And again, it's not the minister's responsibility, it's the cabinet's responsibility. So how we deal with our, our neighbors and who our neighbors let in or who our neighbors let out and who's allowed into our country and how the financial flows are allowed in and out. And I'll give you an example is that our embassies, how they work with each other, this is something in terms of our gray listing is that we need to be able to ensure that we are looking through that checklist and we are making sure that everything we do is to counter and ensure that we do not get grey listed because I can guarantee you, as Sim Chavalala says, 
that South Africa does not want to be grey listed. And just sorry, Chair, two more points. The last one, be, the second last one being that our embassies in Africa, we have some of the worst maintained embassies in Africa compared to our own uh, African countries. And we've been to Namibia, we've seen land in Senegal, um, we've seen in Morocco, we've seen the ambassador there trying to make his own um, money last long with his own budget. A lot of our land parcels and a lot of our own missions are really left to their own devices because I don't know if it's a sense of because it's Africa, we, we believe that, you know, we rather focus on other things. But if we look in Malawi, we look in a lot of the places where I go in Africa, I often just take a, a drive out to oversight these areas as a matter of fact to see how we're doing and and ready to try and meet the staff there and to encourage the staff in terms of the great job that they 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 are doing under the circumstances and it's often that unfortunately they have to work in but in in properties that are that are actually operated by public works and not by international relations so it's not very good uh, for morale and uh, sometimes it's not even safe you know when you're getting into a lift that can get stuck, that has a 45% chance of getting stuck. You know, these things are scary. Or as I say, you know, you drive past some of the prime land in Senegal, that's South African land, and, and it's not, and, 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 it's, and it's not looking, it's, it's looking like it hasn't ever been, been kept at all. And as I say, lastly, in line with the grey listing, a company like McDonald's has sent me a message that, they got threatened, their, their manager was threatened the other day because they report illegal connections um, to the electricity in, 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 one of their, in some of their branches. You don't want a company like McDonald's to close shop in South Africa. You know, that, that's not the kind of message that we want. So again, it's a multi-stakeholder. It's not just the responsibility of international relations, it actually becomes a responsibility inside, in-house domestically of how we come together to ensure that we can maintain relationships with direct foreign investment inside South Africa, that they can report, a, a multinational company can report something like uh, illegal connections and still feel safe within South Africa. Chair, thank you for, for allowing me my input. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Faba. From my side, on the role Minister, that was a Deputy. big insult, eh? That was um, Bergman. Um, under the oh, Bergman. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Insult sorry. me. Yeah, the, it's not delivery. Don't worry, it's a small thing. Uh, Honourable Minister, the there's somewhere in the report where it's indicated that some of the member states in SADC haven't yet come on board in as far as the protocol around the. A trade is consent, which member states are those, and are they being engaged separately or outside uh, the, the the structures in a bilateral so that they can quicken up the process to come to come on board? The second matter is around is around the uh, us reporting quantitatively on this investments that are taking place in the African continent. I appreciate the report. I can see it's indicating part of our, part of our expectation around uh, the quantum in as far as uh, investments is concerned in the African continent. But because we are building a non-sexist South Africa, it will be it will be important for us to show the extent to which these investments in the African continent from South Africa are reflecting the presence and participation of women. Not currently, going forward, I, th I think we need to do that. But also in addition, as one has said in the past, it will be important to indicate as to whether these companies that are from South Africa investing in the African continent, are they helping us to change the status quo in as far as uh, economic history is concerned in South Africa, or are they entrenching the status quo? 
because as part of building a non-racial South Africa, we will have to continue to uplift the black people at all fronts, at the same time, making sure that you don't totally displace or erase what has been existing economically, such that at some point, future generations can inherit from the current generation what will have built for, for South Africa is, is, as non-racialism in economic terms. Otherwise, the report was very good, uh, Minister, but I think going forward, as other members have said, it will be very helpful to the portfolio, portfolio committee and we will be able to disseminate this information widely on the ground uh, in the country as part of our oversight work. Over to you, Minister and the team. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, I will, uh, from time to time, have to ask uh, uh, Ambassador Mukwena uh, to step in, uh, and particularly Ambassador Mukwena, if you could just prepare yourself with respect to the Chairperson's question, uh, that, that will, will assist me. But uh, uh, let me begin sequentially, Chairperson, from uh, Honorable Mpanza, and say that uh, it is difficult to uh, directly follow the line as Honorable Mpanza uh, was suggesting through his question uh, that we uh, should be able to indicate whether uh, the initiatives we refer to um, are actually impacting on uh, communities in rural areas or indeed uh, in the township economy, as he mentioned. I, I can only uh, respond to this translation idea in the following way, by saying that uh, firstly, it's important that what we're talking about are some state-owned companies and then uh, companies that are essentially a private sector actors uh, in South Africa. And our role is primarily a facilitating one. Uh, we are not as Durko direct actors, we are not business actors ourselves. So we're talking of private companies, be they state owned or uh, a fully uh, a private sector owned. But here's uh, my response to the translation. Chairperson, uh, in framing the economic reconstruction and recovery plan, the government had as one of uh, the key priorities agriculture and expanding agricultural production, particularly in the area of exports of uh, uh, citrus and other food uh, products. The uh, government undertook that we should as uh, the, through the Department of Agriculture, uh, Rural Development and Land Reform, provides support to uh, smallholder farmers that had begun to produce products that could go into markets and to provide them with support into the logistics train of export of agricultural goods a target of about 2,995 uh, uh, support measure, uh, 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 measures were proposed of smallholder farmers over 2,900. I've been looking at the latest of the reports. The support has reached in this time of implementing the ERRP around 1,904 smallholder companies. So there's still a way to go, but there is progress uh, uh, being recorded. Those uh, smallholder uh, farmers um, who range uh, from 20 hectares, probably up to your smaller hundreds, have got into a number of value chains of exports of agricultural products into the African market, but also beyond uh, Africa. So it would mean, Chairperson, uh, if I take the translation 
notion uh, presented by Honorable Mpanza that a smallholder farmer uh, somewhere in uh, Mpumalanga or the Eastern Cape has become part of the value chain of exporting uh, goats to the Kuwaiti and uh, United Arab Emirates market, for example. That smallholder farmer now employs more farm workers uh, on the farm. And because we don't have sufficient volume uh, for the orders uh, that are coming in this area of livestock, the uh, smallholder farmer then begins to work with other smallholders so that you build more smallholders participating uh, in this uh, enterprise. Are we addressing inequality through this? I, I don't have a measure, but I know that the producers in the Eastern Cape that have become part of this product line are primarily black, some are women, they're mainly in the rural parts of that province and other provinces in our country. On the township economy, I'm aware of young people involved in producing sneakers, t-shirts and other products and design goods. And these are getting into markets in Africa, in Europe. So yes, uh, uh, but I cannot honestly say it is something that I am tracking. It is what I'm aware is happening. And uh, I, I would say that uh, the department that might bring the best information on this would be trade industry and competition, but also uh, the other departments uh, which are working in some of these uh, sectoral uh, areas. But certainly I think you are seeing small and medium-sized businesses benefit. So when you're talking in the textiles uh, <clears throat> and there are particular product lines Ambassador Mukwena referred to, it would be women uh, in communities that haven't been enjoying uh, this opportunity uh, for several years. And uh, they now begin to produce goods that you see in Mauritius, in the Seychelles, in other parts uh, of the continent. <clears throat> so uh, there are uh, opportunities being presented, uh, which are new and growing opportunities. But uh, I, as a uh, you know, the minister here in, in Durko, I don't seriously uh, devote time to tracing the line. Where I do pay attention is, is the South African company that seeks to trade in an African country enjoying the access that it should? Uh, is it hindered in what it seeks to do in the economic space? And then the other areas which I'll come to, which are in some of the questions, those would be some of the areas I look at. The direct translation might be something DTIC would look at, as well as small uh, and medium-sized uh, and small business uh, department. But I am aware of some of the developments which do accrue to previously disadvantaged members of our society as well as to uh, the township economy, rural uh, areas, and so on. With respect to uh, the Honorable uh, Hendricks, um, I must say that uh, I'm glad the Honorable Hendricks and I hope other members are taking up opportunities for community development and community projects that are offered by the various uh, UN uh, agencies such as UNICEF, uh, the WFP and others uh, uh, that are hosted through the UN Coordination Office uh, in Pretoria. So I'm glad that that is happening. As the department, I know we have actively promoted the take up of halal uh, products from South Africa because we believe we have a good, well-established, very competent sector uh, in this area of halal. Uh, goods. <clears throat> We've been able to assist in securing significant business contracts by South African companies in the halal product area in a market like Malaysia, 
We are now looking to Indonesia. Uh, uh, honorable members would, would know we've become uh, an observer uh, to ASEAN, and we are hoping through that role, more opportunities in this halal trade area will become available uh, to South African uh, companies. <clears throat> Um, on Groudville, uh, Groudville, I do know uh, Groudville, and I know uh, of Chief Albert Lutuli, and I do wish uh, the community members who are producing or intending uh, to produce peanut butter, I, I wish them a success, as uh, announced by Honorable Hendricks. On the on, on Honorable Faber, I, I would agree with the Honorable Faber that indeed it would have been a good idea when you uh, focus on economic diplomacy, that DTIC may also be considered. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I hope uh, we've been able to do a credible job speaking of, the, of ourselves as DERCO. Uh, we work with other departments. Uh, we've illustrated these in a number, this in a number of the slides that we've presented to you. And I think uh, it's important uh, that uh, we encourage uh, a meeting uh, with any of uh, the portfolio committees uh, that you, Chair, may believe uh, is a necessary combination uh, of committees. Um, on uh, whether we are subsidizing uh, other countries, well, the petroleum, I believe, is not owned by uh, South Africa, the government. It may be companies that sell at a lesser uh, rate, or indeed, uh, it may be that uh, the governments in Sadek countries provide a higher subsidy level than our uh, government uh, may do in South Africa. But again, I think here at DTIC, uh, uh, all minerals and energy would be able to explain uh, the formulae that are related uh, uh, to uh, the petroleum. Uh, uh, various levies that impact on the price uh, uh, in South Africa. On BRICS, uh, Chair, we were not asked to present on BRICS. It was economic diplomacy with respect to Africa. We've had previous uh, presentations uh, on BRICS, and as uh, the Honorable Faber would be aware, uh, BRICS uh, countries, particularly China, uh, remains uh, the largest uh, uh, and significantly growing trading partner uh, of South Africa. Russia, far less, uh, but certainly India, uh, a growing uh, economic uh, trade uh, being engaged in and uh, moved to shift uh, the trade balance in our favor more and more by having more goods uh, going uh, into India. So we are working hard to make the BRICS relationship uh, work for us. It's a really great club uh, of countries, hence the number that are approaching us, since we will be assuming the chair from next year, to consider expansion of BRICS. Um, <clears throat> Honorable Musani is correct that uh, we did not focus primarily on implementation of AFCFTA, as the Honorable Msani is aware, the AFCFTA came into operation from January 2020, and she would be aware that with the free trade area agreement of this immensity, there are a number of steps uh, uh, that would need to be uh, put in place in order for effective uh, implementation of the agreement. Among them would be agreements on rules of origin, uh, which are almost at a concluded stage, uh, various uh, offers on tariffs with various goods, uh, discussions on non-tariff barriers and how these are dealt with on the continent. All of this is being uh, handled by the uh, trade and industry uh, uh, ministers. And uh, I'm sure Minister Patel would be able to provide a report we certainly could get a report from trade and industry and have the relevant colleagues uh, present uh, uh, to the portfolio committee. There is a, a plan on infrastructure, um, and I think that should also perhaps be included 
when a presentation on the AFCFTA is made. And we're fully aware that the infrastructure logistics are the key area, as is uh, the uh, common uh, uh, payment system, the automatic payment system, the matters of customs and revenue uh, management, which are such key areas in a free trade uh, uh, agreement process. On uh, the African Pharma Company, at the last meeting of the Executive Council of the African Union, we agreed that uh, we should operationalize the African Medicines Agency, uh, which has been a key focus area of AU for several years. And given that we are now producing vaccines, uh, diagnostics, uh, and other medical uh, tools, we felt that this was an opportune uh, moment to bring the AMA into operation. And this has been agreed, especially now that uh, the African CDC will be an agency of uh, the African Union. So indeed, we're working on this uh, African pharmaceutical company idea. But I think given different uh, rules around uh, 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 registration uh, of pharmaceutical products. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do to have a common uh, African framework, but the matter of pharmaceuticals and the pharmaceutical industry per se are key focus areas for us in the context of the African Union. I agree with the Honorable Msami, Msani that we should do more work on awareness of what this anti African sentiment. I don't think it's anti-foreigner, it's anti-African uh, sentiment that we have uh, in our country. And uh, it's something that uh, we certainly should do more, more work on. I've been speaking to public diplomacy about this and we're looking at what uh, might be done. I think Honorable Msani, on response to insurgencies, <clears throat> as individual nations, we can't intervene if the country that is experiencing the insurgency does not agree to a regional or indeed a continental uh, intervention. It took us uh, quite a while to agree, to have Mozambique agree that we have a SADC mission. And once that had been agreed, we were then able to move uh, fairly speedily, and we are seeing positive results. But countries tend to want to address the problem themselves, and that often causes the delay uh, that you have uh, uh, referred to, but uh, there are real uh, efforts to address this. On the one-stop border uh, initiatives uh, that you referred to, uh, we are uh, uh, seeing home affairs lead uh, in this regard, it's still very much a new area. I think Honorable Bergman touched on some of what needs to be done. Uh, we need to improve uh, uh, the borders. We need to improve how we deal with goods versus persons and really have a much more uh, seamless operation uh, in terms of management of immigration and movement uh, of, of goods uh, and services across uh, the continent. Um, I, I think uh, our report indicates, while it doesn't touch all uh, 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 products uh, or all uh, minerals that are uh, you know, found in Africa, I think it gives a sense of some of what is being done. Uh, you mentioned coffee. Um, one of the big products from the continent is cocoa. And uh, we are really glad that South Africa and Ghana have agreed that they're gonna work together on production uh, of quality chocolate. Uh, Ghana had already started and they've asked to work with us uh, in order to expand uh, the initial production, uh, production base uh, that they've built. So uh, we are sharing experience and expertise uh, on the uh, WHO hub regional hub that Ambassador Mukwena reported on, you would know that uh, uh, we have spokes uh, throughout uh, the continent. 
that are smaller regional sites. One of them is in Rwanda. And again, South Africa is assisting with getting that site uh, up and off the ground, including in training uh, young uh, uh, postgraduate students to be able to work in that pharmaceutical and vaccine uh, production uh, hub. Uh, with respect to Honorable uh, Corsi, <laughs> well, I'm not sure because Honorable Bergman didn't uh, finish what he said, but uh, I do know that uh, Parliament has particular rules on oversight, and uh, I don't know, Honorable Bergman suggested he has a way of getting information, etc. Uh, and I don't know, uh, MPs are not gullible. I, I didn't quite get the thrust of what the Honorable Bergman was referring to. I think the committee would have to discuss this matter uh, of individuals uh, approaching uh, uh, the department and saying they're practicing oversight. I, I would be wary because I think we also need to be alerted because we do have programs and it would be most, uh, I think, unfortunate if an honorable member walked into the department and found that we had a workshop and could not uh, pay attention uh, uh, to them and so on. Uh, but I can't say that uh, we would close and lock the door if we see a member approaching. I just think uh, my understanding is oversight is managed through the portfolio committee and that the committees have been given that oversight role uh, and it is parliament. Uh, I'm not sure that it is that Parliament says individual members can uh, walk in and then say, I'm doing oversight, give me uh, this. So I'm, I'm not sure. On quarterly meetings, yes, there is prior planning uh, and colleagues have uh, begun the practice of developing uh, an agreed uh, framework and agenda. Um, and on um, MOUs, uh, there is discussion in South Africa when we are planning uh, to have a bilateral engagement with a particular country as to what areas are viable uh, for agreements or exploration uh, for cooperation. On the number of bilaterals with African countries, I'll ask Ms. Makwena uh, to assist uh, with that number. Uh, what are the benefits to South Africa? I think some of them have been presented in the report that we've put uh, before you. Indeed, we're aware of the Google cable and are excited uh, that Google have chosen that it would begin from South Africa. Uh, I understand uh, its uh, uh, size uh, and ca capacity in terms of bytes is in the terabytes uh, region, uh, which is extremely uh, significant capacity for connectivity, it's going to be a very important undersea cable connecting Africa and, uh, and Europe. And we believe it's gonna make an important difference to our ability to have uh, 5G uh, introduced and uh, really uh, provided on the African uh, continent and also expanding uh, connectivity for distant communities that don't currently enjoy. Uh, such benefit. We're glad that Google uh, is partnering with the South African company uh, in implementing uh, uh, this program. So yes, uh, uh, very positive uh, for uh, business development in Africa. Um, I'm aware of the gas uh, 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 demands uh, of Europe, uh, given the uh, conflict between Russia and Ukraine and the threats around a uh, provision of gas uh, by Russia. I know that uh, already Algeria does have a, a, a connection uh, to uh, Italy as well as uh, to France. And I know there are discussions between uh, Tunisia, Algeria, and other countries in Europe. So yes, we're aware of it, but we are not party to it. Uh, we have uh, reported on how we assist where there are problems in host countries. We might begin at the level of the mission. Uh, if it is not resolved, the issue might then come to senior officials in the department. 
uh, then it could be the minister and it may very well then have to have the president engage uh, uh, with a particular uh, head of state. Uh, so we provide whatever assistance uh, we can. On ensuring respect for labor laws, we make it very clear to South African companies that our expectation is that they would respect local uh, labor laws. Uh, there have been complaints of abuse. You would recall there were some with respect to Zambia, and I think it was ShopRight at the time, and these uh, were addressed. Uh, at times, it's demands uh, for you know benefits and privileges that are far beyond the capacity of some of the companies to offer. There's also uh, sometimes you know an abuse of of the company. So it's not that all our companies are at fault. Some have made mistakes, and uh, these have been uh, attended to. On the Sadek Rail matter. Uh, these uh, uh, potential projects have been discussed recently in the Minister's Council and between ourselves and uh, Botswana on the uh, recent BNC, and they are to be followed up by the relevant departments. There is a, a currently appetite for addressing the paucity of rail connections uh, within the SADC region. Um, on uh, the matter of Namibia, the oil find and the gas finds and the massive gas resources in Mozambique, I, I think, honorable members, we should be worried that in South Africa, there seems to be a tendency of saying we can't explore whether we have oil or gas in uh, South African uh, 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 shores. And uh, this is very worrying because it means we're going to miss out on opportunities to benefit from trade in oil and gas and other minerals that may be found offshore. So uh, we, are, we are quite worried uh, about uh, the recent uh, uh, losses in court, uh, and we intend to uh, continue to try to pursue uh, these important uh, opportunities. The matter of whether we are connecting uh, to get contracts and provision of gas through Namibia, Mozambique is already uh, in existence. But with respect to Namibia, this would be something uh, that the Department of Minerals uh, and Energy uh, would be responsible uh, uh, for uh, exploring. Um, it's not true, Honorable Nkosi, that there's no coordination between DTIC and Treasury. Of the ministers in government, these are the two ministers I speak to most in addition to the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries. So uh, um, there is coordination. Uh, we are uh, in constant engagement because that is the only way we can ensure uh, that South Africa Incorporated is successful. Uh, yes, I, we mentioned the structured links uh, uh, between ourselves, the business sector and other uh, actors, stakeholders, um, and uh, you know we have established links, and these occur not just with Derco but with other departments as well. The comment that we established was to improve the levels of coordination. It wasn't because there is no coordination at all. Where I want to see improvement is with respect to the provincial international work, and I've begun to talk to some of the premiers on this, especially for the provinces where there's huge international interest. Uh, and I'm hoping that we also will be engaging uh, with local government through SALGA, because we can't do it from municipality to municipality. Honorable Bergman uh, made what seemed to be a, a, a very well uh, constructed uh, speech and I couldn't extract the questions because um, I, you know, cannot uh, uh, quarrel with some of his uh, notions. For example, um, he believes we should be doing more uh, with Russia. I think you do trade uh, with countries that wish to purchase your goods, and uh, if you wish to make a shift. Uh, 
to a particular form of crude oil, it must be in line with what you're processing because apparently crude oils differ. They're not all the same. And so it would be useful to perhaps pose the question, Honorable Bergman, to uh, the Honorable Mantashe as to whether this would be a beneficial uh, move uh, uh, for South Africa. You would be aware uh, that uh, we do use maize much more uh, as a grain uh, in our country and far less of wheat, and that we have diverse suppliers of wheat uh, for South Africa. So um, there hasn't uh, been an impetus to seek to leverage more uh, uh, on this uh, uh, BRICS relationship that you described. I agree with you, intra-African trade is far too low, hence the African Free Trade Area Agreement. And indeed, as Honorable Msani has pointed out and you repeated, we must address the logistics of infrastructure as this does deter the ambition of greater uh, intra-African trade. And I've seen myself the border issues that you mentioned, um, that they are a real problem and need to be addressed. And as I said, the Department of Home Affairs is looking at this much more closely. Uh, well, I think uh, visas are a necessary evil, much as we might dislike them. Our problems around uh, immigration uh, uh, and illegal migrants center around the poor ability to address uh, some of the visa issues. I do agree uh, that we should modernize and we're trying to do so with e-visas and visas issued on arrival to particular countries. And once we have uh, successfully uh, learned and drawn on these, uh, what are pilots essentially, we will then be able to broaden in the way that you uh, uh, describe. Um, I have been called all sorts of names, uh, but I'm cer I certainly don't practice hypocrisy. Uh, and what I say to the DRC, I say to Zimbabwe and other uh, uh, member states, um, and also, uh, essentially, it is up to those countries themselves to determine uh, their national direction. Where they require our help, we would provide it should they be willing to partner with South Africa. But when they don't seek our help, uh, we cannot force ourselves on them. The pitch you see us as practicing hypocrisy uh, and I, I, I believe that label doesn't suit me at all because I'm not in that vein. We do do election monitoring, uh, and I think uh, Africa thus far is performing rather well. Uh, most of the elections that have been held in the last three years have been found to have been conducted uh, uh, properly, and the AU as well as our region continued election monitoring even in the difficult circumstances of COVID-19. A large part was done by virtual means, but we did have smaller numbers on the ground in each uh, of the elections. And uh, uh, we continue uh, to have election observers uh, in where we are invited uh, to provide, because it's not something that you just uh, uh, you know, do yourself. And I must say, on the African continent, the level of uh, voter participation is extremely high. Uh, the countries that uh, you um, don't mention, you know, Europe, America, have very low participation rates and appear to have less trust in their electoral systems than we have uh, in our own. Gray listing and the threat of it is extremely worrying, hence the regulatory steps being undertaken uh, uh, by the cabinet. And of course, uh, it's our responsibility, all of us, to address any threat to our country, our nation, uh, that we as parliamentarians uh, uh, must protect. I am uh, paying attention to improving the character of our chanceries and our residences and uh, our missions. Uh, yes, we have had poor maintenance, but you know from uh, reports we've been providing to the Portfolio Committee uh, that we have been uh, initiating a number 
of renovation and improved maintenance project. You know that there are missions in which the lifts have been repaired and are now working. You know that we have plans to build uh, facilities in a number of countries. These presentations have been made uh, previously. Um, I, well, I don't know any manager of McDonald's and I personally have not received the message uh, uh, that you have uh, referred to, but I think if there are such threats, those managers and executives should really report them uh, to the police because uh, we want uh, a business which provides employment uh, and opportunities of uh, uh, you know, ownership uh, by locals in our country uh, that such businesses should be allowed to function. One of the things that we are concerned about uh, are these construction mafia. These gangs uh, uh, that go from site to site uh, in our country and actually stop projects from being implemented. Uh, this is sending a very bad signal around infrastructure investment, and it's something we, uh, as honorable members, should pay close attention to and ensure that it is uh, stopped. Uh, with respect to the members that haven't signed the protocol, Chairperson, we made a declaration, uh, adopted rather, a decision at the last uh, Minister's Council meeting in Kinshasa in DRC, where uh, we agreed that all the countries that have not signed on to the protocol, particularly on trade, must be approached by the Executive Secretary of SADC in the period from the summit to the next meeting of the Minister's Council, and that we would want a report on uh, uh, why they have not uh, uh, ratified or signed on. Uh, we are not uh, engaging them as South Africa. We believe this is a SADC protocol and it's the responsibility of our uh, full-time staff and the Executive Secretary to make uh, this this happen. Um, I'm unable to uh, provide the information, Chair, that you asked for with respect to women as a presence in uh, the investments uh, that have been referred to. I can only report uh, that the one uh, state-owned company that is beginning to really do impressive contracting on ports as well as on rail line modernization is Transnet, and the uh, executive head of Transnet is a female, Ms. Darby. Uh, as to companies that participate on the basis of South Africa's rules on equality and procurement equality in particular, sourcing from small and medium-sized businesses would have to include a significant proportion of those companies being women in majority or indeed uh, uh, women uh, uh, led. So I hope that uh, some of the work is addressing uh, the negatives that continue uh, to be part of our society and that indeed we are seeing race and uh, gender equity being addressed uh, through the initiative that uh, uh, Ambassador Mukwena uh, uh, illustrated uh, in uh, the presentation uh, that we brought to the committee. Honorable Chairperson, I've tried to answer all the questions. I now wish to request you to allow uh, Ambassador Mukwena to add where I may have been uh, inadequate in my responses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Ambassador Mukwena. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson and Minister. Thank you for responding to all the questions, actually. I'll, I'll just close the gaps here and there. Starting with the, the question that uh, Chair, the questions that the Chair asked. Uh, in particular, the number of um, bilateral engagements that we have with our, our countries of the continent, we have 41, and these uh, straddle the areas of senior management, ministerial level, as well as BNCs at the level of president. 
So, um, Chairperson, we also must indicate that we are quite aware, and so are our missions uh, throughout the continent, that whatever we do as DERCO and our missions must translate into a difference in the lives of our people, particularly the most disadvantaged. So what, what we have done as DERCO and our missions is to embed the whole issue of triple challenges, addressing triple challenges and reflecting how we're going to do this in our annual plans and in our mission annual plans. So we call them MAPs, mission annual plans. So in their country strategies, they would have indicated so in, this, in the activities that we, they will engage in how they will address the triple challenges. Chairperson, practically, if I may indicate some of the structured bilateral mechanisms that we have been able to undertake or implement on the continent, we always take um, uh, small, bus small businesses. We also target black business council. Uh, they form part of our engagement in business fora. And if I may make a very crude, uh, clear example, uh, there is a, 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 um, a conference taking place in Eastern Cape um, sponsored by the ECDC, Eastern Cape Development Corporation, uh, around 14 to 15 September, which to which we're encouraging embassies to also bring companies from their countries that, um, that, that, that have a focus on women um, and youth. Um, there's also a conference that Transnet is um, is going to be hosting on the 23rd of September. And the focus of the conference is on uh, um, focus on Africa. It's called Focus on Africa. And even in that regard, we have invited uh, embassies based in Pretoria uh, to participate, a number of countries, particularly in East, Southern, and West Africa will be participating at the Transnet uh, con one day conference on the 23rd. Um, some of the questions raised by the chair were also reflected by Honorable Mpanza uh, when he asked how our activities translate to ensuring that women also participate in the economy of our country or elsewhere. Um, if I may make an example of this contract that OTT is looking at that we assisted to facilitate whether they will get it or not. If you look at how it will translate into jobs, those jobs, the bulk of which might even go to women and youth, uh, even the enterprises that will be involved in the spin-offs that are coming out of that contract will be towards women, small enterprises, and medium enterprises. I would like to also make an example of the South Africa Week, <clears throat> which our mission in Mauritius is involved with our tourism department in scheduling for um, uh, around, I think, September, October. Uh, our mission is particularly targeting rural women, mm -hmm. craft makers from Limpopo, Mpumalanga as well, who will participate in the South Africa Week. And CEDA is also uh, participating in this. So I think, Chair, one can see that women will form uh, the bulk of the craft makers that will be participating in, in Mauritius. This is just really one example. The minister has responded to almost all the questions and just the, the one that I thought we could indicate around joint commissions or how we deal with the evaluation which was raised by Honorable um, Nkosi is that we have built in into our structured bilateral mechanisms, midterm reviews 
that take place in between joint commissions. So if joint commission is to take place every two years, so every year we would, we would have built in a senior officials meeting or a meeting at the level of minister to establish whether we are making progress on the decisions that were made during the structured bilateral mechanism. Uh, honorable, <coughs> honorable Chairperson, on the issue of visas, Minister has been very, very clear, but if I can just indicate that um, Home Affairs is already piloting e-visas in a number of countries and we are waiting for the outcome of such pilots, uh, it does mean that uh, they are going, um, they are moving in the direction where uh, visa management uh, will be much easier perhaps, uh, while we also ensure that our country is uh, accessed within the right uh, provisions um, and, and, not, uh, and not otherwise. Thank you. I thank you, Chair. Yeah. yeah. Ambassador, I also want to take this opportunity to, to thank the minister for the comprehensive responses in the process, alerting us of the important work that the department is doing and the efforts that the department is undertaking to try and improve coordination between the department and other departments. We also want to thank the team, the Ambassador Mukwena and your team for the manner in which uh, you reported on behalf of the department to the portfolio committee. Matters that relate to whether individuals or the committee and vice versa must do oversight, I thought they are straightforward matters. Um, that we work through parliament as portfolio committees. We are established as portfolio committees. As and when another member wants to do something somewhere, the convention has been that there will be a discussion between uh, the chairperson and a, a, a particular member. If you act in your individual capacity as an MP, uh, that is uh, something else, but it will always be better that uh, if you stumble into something wherever you are, it will always be better for such to be brought to the attention of the portfolio committee. But I think in our properly convened meeting, we can discuss some of these things because learning is an, it's a perpetual thing uh, in life and we continue to acquire knowledge as we move on. I want to thank the hon honorable members of the portfolio committee, the staff, everybody else, the members of the public of South Africa who were part of observing and learning from the interaction between the department and the portfolio committee and members of the media. This is how honorable members, we come to the end of our meeting for today. We'll meet you in the sitting later. Thank you very much. The meeting is now closed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.